Hello, my name is Justin Novak. I'm a senior security operations researcher at the Software Engineering Institute. I'm really excited today to talk about my research project, Building a SOC Knowledge Base and Ontology. My research is on building a SOC Knowledge Base and an Ontology. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my research today. But before I do, I want to start by talking a little bit about SOCs, or Security Operations Centers, what they are, why they're important, and what makes it so challenging to build some of these organizations. That's going to lead me into a little bit of reviewing about how this research came about, what our goal is, what we hope to achieve with the research, and some of the outcomes that we're looking forward to. After that, I'll go through a little bit of the process of how we are going about doing this research. And finally, I'll talk about the ontology itself towards the end. So, first, I want to talk a little bit about SOCs to give everyone some background about, again, why we are trying to solve this problem and why it's a problem to begin with. A security operations center can be thought of as the nerve center for cybersecurity and information insurance for any given organization. Typically, SOCs offer some core services like network monitoring and incident response. However, in addition to these core services, SOCs can offer a lot of other services and functions to their constituency. These can range from things like vulnerability management, to forensics, to communications and information sharing, or even to things like giving best practices to the constituency and leading them in cyber awareness campaigns. What this means is that each SOC is a little bit different than the one before it, and each SOC is a different organization based on the goals, the objectives, and the mission of the organization that it serves. Now that organization that the SOC serves could be a federal government agency, a private sector organization like a company, or it may be some other private public partnership or a non-government organization. Really, it could be anything. So the challenge is that every SOC is unique based on the unique aspects of the organization that it serves. So, on one hand, a SOC is an absolutely critical asset for any organization that has cybersecurity concerns or information assurance concerns. It's, again, the nerve center of everything that you do on that side of, of your um, organization's operations. On the other hand, however, SOCs are really challenging to implement. There's no SOC in a box solution that you can find and just implement again and again repeatedly in different organizations. A SOC that works for a large government organization doesn't work for a small private business. Indeed, oftentimes, a SOC that works for one moderate-sized government organization may not work for a similar moderate-sized government organization based on the needs, the mission, and the goals of that organization. Take the U.S. Department of Defense, for example. The U.S. Department of Defense has more than 100 agencies, activities, commands, so on and so forth. Each one of these may be responsible for multiple networks and hundreds or even thousands of network endpoints, assets, users, and so forth. What this means is that in just this one large federal government agency, you have the need for multiple different SOCs, and those SOCs may not be anything alike. So it's really challenging to implement these types of things, and in turn, because of those challenges, it can be quite expensive to do so as well. Just the process of going through and assessing the needs for a SOC and outlining some of the requirements can cost well into six figures. That doesn't even get into things like designing and implementing the final SOC solution that, it, that, um, that we come up with. Why is this the case? Well, it's because those specialized needs for those organizations require specialized expert knowledge to answer some of the questions and to define and outline and find good solutions. This is one of the things that we do at the security operations team at the Software Engineering Institute. Most of our team has worked in SOCs or has worked in other types of operations centers like threat operations centers, network uh, operations centers, and so on. We have knowledge in answering questions like, what type of capability is needed? What tools will be required to implement that capability? 
and how can organizations manage not only their tools, but their people and their processes that they have as part of their security operations center. Going through this process requires tapping into that type of expert knowledge in order to build out the organization and build out the stock appropriately. So we have a process that we use that starts with assessment and then taps into our team's expert knowledge to develop a series of requirements for those people, processes, and technologies that the SOC needs to function. Once we outline requirements, we can implement them and turn them into a design for a functioning, capable SOC. But again, that's really hard to do and can be time consuming and costly for an organization. So we set about trying to find a better way to do this. We thought, how can we shorten the time frame and reduce the costs necessary to go through this whole process? When we thought about this, we realized that the major challenge was all the time that it took to get experts, get them on site, go through the process of analyzing and assessing and gathering requirements and doing surveys and things like that, and then turning those, all those requirements into an actual set of solutions for the SOC. So really the challenge is expert knowledge is scarce, hard to come by, and is costly. So we thought that if we could capture that knowledge, capture the ideas and the experience of the experts, put it into a system that can be easily and readily accessed and understood by the non-expert, that might be a solution that helps organizations and agencies deploy SOC capabilities more quickly and more affordably. So our goal is to build what we call an ontology. Now, an ontology is just a way of structuring knowledge. The word ontology actually means the study of what is or the study of what, of what you have. So to build an ontology, we need to create a large database of objects and relationships between those objects. By doing this, we hope to be able to substitute for the, all of that expert time and that expert knowledge that is required to build a SOC. In our case, when we think about what is involved in building a SOC or what our experience has been as a team in developing SOC capabilities, it can take a month or longer just to do the assessment and understand what the current situation for a SOC capability is. To develop requirements and specific solutions for people, processes, and technology, it can take up to a year or more. By deploying an expert knowledge, uh, knowledge base or an ontology, we hope to be able to reduce those to about 25% of what it takes now in terms of time and the associated cost of bringing in and using those experts. So we hope to shrink something that can take a year or longer down to just a few months. So how are we going to do that? In order to understand how we plan to do this, we have to go back to that knowledge, that expert knowledge that is required to develop a SOC. SOCs need a few basic things to function and to be successful as organizations. A SOC needs people to carry out the mission and to meet the goals and objectives of the organization. They need, it needs processes for the people to follow to do their jobs. And a SOC needs technology. That's the tools, the hardware, and the software, and everything else that the people use to implement the processes to carry out the mission of the SOC. So we started by mapping out all of this knowledge, breaking it into the fields of people, processes, and technology, and mapping out, as experts, what do we think people, processes, and technology are needed for a SOC? Based on that, we developed a series of, of interviews and the tools to gather knowledge from other experts around the world and understand what they thought about those fields of knowledge. So our team went out and interviewed uh, dozens of experts from around the world who have been in SOCs, who have developed SOC capabilities, and who have worked in operations centers in different settings, public sector, private sector, large organizations, small organizations. And we walked them through some of the scenarios that we had developed based on people, processes, and technologies. By recording these interviews, we were able to take the knowledge and the expertise that was inherent in these individuals 
and turn that into data. The data is in the form of coded transcripts. Now these coded transcripts are an opportunity for us to, again, break the knowledge down into specific data, but also to start identifying linkages and relationships between the different fields of, of knowledge and the different data that these experts were sharing with us. That's the start of a great ontology, because those relationships outline the objects and the relationships that you need for an ontology. So by looking for common themes, we can begin to define classes of objects and specific individual objects to build out our knowledge base. This is just a quick look at what some of the data looks like. So you can see here that this is an interview that we conducted with an expert. And we've begun to take this data and code it out by highlighting what the different topics were that the expert was talking about at a different time. You can see on the right hand side of the screen here that we have our coding frame outlined, outlining at a high level people, processes, and technology. And then as you go down further down the tree, different knowledge fields or subfields within each of people, processes, and technology. So this is what we mean by turning the transcripts, turning the interviews into data that we can use to build out an ontology. Looking a little bit more closely at what that ontology looks like, here, this is a visual representation of some of those objects and classes and the different relationships between them. So you can see here, for example, we have a sim is a tool, and tools are a technology that all go into a SOC, into building a SOC. So this is a very early example. The ontology, as we continue to add data and add knowledge from our different experts, will continue to grow and expand and become more complicated um, and more intricate as we go. So that brings us to our proposed SOC ontology. We propose the Ontology for SOC Creation, Assistance, and Replication, or OSCAR. OSCAR, we hope, will answer key questions about SOC development. First, we want to understand what motivations organizations have when they're trying to build SOC capabilities. We also want to understand what challenges those organizations may have when they're attempting to develop their SOC. And then, of course, we want to look at what people, processes, and technology are required to develop an effective SOC capability based on the specific and unique needs of an organization. Finally, we want to look at how do security priorities change when you're developing a SOC capability, and how do you address those priorities in your SOC? To build OSCAR from this basic knowledge frame, we have to do a couple of things. First, we have to start analyzing all of the data that we have, all of the, all of the relationships, all of the objects and the classes that we've defined. So we start by doing just a basic taxonomy. What are all the terms that are being used in these interviews by our experts. Once we develop that taxonomy, we can develop a vocabulary and outline what is an object, what is a relationship, and how do they interact. Looking at those interactions, we'll start to build out that ontology and create a more complicated structure of knowledge. We'll conduct data validation using survey models and other references and some of the experiences that our team has in the real world in developing SOCs and other similar capabilities. Finally, we have to define both how we're going to input knowledge into an eventual tool that we'll use to, to um, implement this uh, ontology and to use it in the real world. And then we'll start to model the knowledge using web ontology language and to build this into an actual tool that teams can deploy when they're looking to develop SOCs. Our next steps involve starting to transition OSCAR, the ontology that we have, into a true knowledge base that can be used as part of an expert system. The expert system will actually be the tool that teams can use, DOD partners and other organizations, that they can actually use to access this knowledge base and to help it outline the requirements for building a security operations center. So we're really looking forward to the next steps of this research. I hope you found this presentation to be interesting. I want to thank my team, Christopher Rodman, Dr. Angel Hueca, Justin Valdango, and Sam Pearl of the Security Operations Team at the SEI, and Dr. Travis Barreau, 
from Carnegie Mellon University, who is our on-campus collaborator. Thank you for your time and attention. If you have any questions about this research, please feel free to email us or reach out to me at any time. Thank you.